Hello. So I am here today with one of our lovely course graduates, Nikki Dye. Hello, Nikki. Hi, Jenny. <laughs> lovely to see you today. So Nikki um, is a yoga teacher and a shiatsu massage practitioner. Um, so drawing on both that yoga philosophy and the five elements from Chinese medicine. Um, and she specializes in working with sleep, menopause, and of course now with cancer as well. Um, so it's really lovely to reconnect with you, Nikki, because I think you were one of the earlier people to come on to the trainings. And it's just so nice just to hear what people have been doing since. So I guess to start off, it'd just be really nice just to remind ourselves, like, what was what was your journey into doing the course? What was it that kind of appealed to you or felt like it was the right thing for you to do? Well, I think um, I was expanding my kind of therapeutic yoga business. Um, and, um, you know, with the stat of one in two, then I wanted to be more informed and um, to have a more specific training, but also I was asked by um, a breast cancer surgeon um, from who is, uh, he's the director of the breast clinic at the Cromwell Hospital, if I could be on his website as the yoga and mindfulness and breathwork um, practitioner. Oh. So um, I really wanted to, um, yeah, kind of find out as much as I could and then your te your teacher training popped up on the yoga teachers forum and i thought well that's fantastic i think i'd done a, maybe a workshop by then but i thought when i was asked to actually be a partner i thought right i definitely want to do what i can to do the longer training so i think i've done all of your trainings now yes i think you yes. have at this point yeah and it, there is a difference between obviously between kind of that foundation level which just gives you some working knowledge if someone in your class happens to get a diagnosis but when you want to be like you say a partner in um in this situation and something that's more specialist it's just nice to have that sort of more in-depth um, understanding and qualification um and it's funny isn't it sometimes like when we start to bring our attention to something or our intention to something how it manifests that way it's like we sort of think about things we need and then suddenly it's like oh that showed up in my feed or Absolutely. yeah and I think the really good thing about the training is that we're tapping into 20 years of your experience of working with people with cancer so that that knowledge is just you know quite incredible and you've kind of honed all the different poses and you've come across all different types of variations or modifications based on who's in the room who's present which individual is in front of you yeah uh, thank you for saying that I'm yeah I've been really lucky I guess that um you know the way my classes have unfolded and they started initially as um, being for a breast cancer charity so it was very specialist there um, and I'm really glad I had that experience because um, it is the most common cancer we're going to come across but uh, since I've been working with Maggie's it's an open forum so I've also been able to work with people with all different kinds of, of cancer because it's literally for anyone who has cancer so that's been a learning curve as well, which has been amazing. Um, so, yeah, I guess it'd be interesting to hear from your point of view what it's like being on the course, because I know what it's like for me <laughs> teaching it. Um, and I always love each time there's a new cohort, like getting to know a new group and hearing everyone's yoga journeys and people have come from all over the UK and overseas so it's always that nice sort of feeling for me to get to know a whole new group of teachers um but yeah what was it like for you being on the course are there sort of things that or aspects that you particularly remember or that stood out yeah I think I remember um it's always really interesting to get different perspectives 
Mm. and to meet people who've either had an experience themselves or have somebody close to them. Um, And also when you present um, different kinds of breath work or poses or modifications, um, it's just a, a, a wider group, I think, is really beneficial because you have different things people like different things or yeah it's just you know it's nice to hear other people's questions yes I think comes that's up to them. the thing with the group isn't it and because each time although the content is largely the same of course I keep tweaking and developing but um it's a very different experience each time because it's a new group of people. And I think that's why I love doing it live that there's always, there's always something I learn as well because somebody is sharing their experience or, you know, we've had people who work for the NHS who have given insight. You know, I had a radiologist one time on the course. And so we got to hear a bit more about what it's like from an NHS perspective. Like there's always things that we learn from each other. Um, And like you say, the questions other people ask can then trigger trains of thoughts for ourselves. And those discussions can be really interesting and fruitful, I think. Mm. Um, you know, it gives you the opportunity to do the breakout rooms where we discuss how, how might it feel in this case or this case and discuss different scenarios. So it's always interesting to hear other people's um, points of view and preferences. Yeah, because actually sometimes we do have things that feel maybe really obvious to us or we might assume oh well I'm I'm sure everybody would think or feel this way and then sometimes it's surprising to hear from people saying oh no actually that's not true for me I feel really differently or I have a completely different opinion Mm -hmm. um and that's a really useful learning experience because that's exactly what you might get when you're teaching as well that you might think that somebody would have a certain reaction to maybe their diagnosis or treatment or something. And then it's not what you think it's going to be at all. Mm -hmm. Um, So it's nice to sort of have that little practice run in the course before moving out into, into the world and teaching. So were there, um, so you've mentioned about, like the modifications and sort of different approach, was that quite a different way of teaching from your initial teacher training? Or did um, you think there was a lot of overlap? I think um, I think it's just more informed of a specific health mm-hmm. conditions um, from your experience, because I've, I've done various therapeutic trainings in women's health, um, long COVID and you get to a point um, after a while that therapeutic yoga there's a lot of overlaps and you can do the same thing for lots of different things depending on what outcome you want to see but I think bringing it back to that very specific experience of you know you having come across so many different people in the last 20 years to, to say oh let's modify it this way it's a bit like when I do menopause for hot flushes Mm. we create space around the body so that it's less hot literally I mean that's very very specific isn't it (laughs) yes yes I see what you mean and I I yeah I really like what you said there about you can draw on different trainings and use those practices in other settings and I think this has been my approach in my trainings is it's not a um it's not like a copyrighted sequence like here learn this and repeat it it's more when you really understand the needs of somebody and then you look at all the yoga that you know and think oh what practices do I know that would meet those needs Mm. and so then you can you can draw on something from your menopause yoga for cancer if it's appropriate for what they need and vice versa. So there's things that we do in the cancer course that might be useful for your menopause students as well. So 
it's I've it's, certainly it's, brought it outside of um mm. working with people with cancer and brought it outside to different um therapeutic um yeah situations definitely so that's been you know it's like a toolkit isn't it yes yes mm. absolutely um and obviously there's a there's a big crossover in menopause anyway because so many women who go through cancer treatment are put into a medical menopause mm. um, so I d- have you come across that in your teaching so far um or is this something no, that not so far um yeah I did the menopause yoga training um within the last year so okay. I'm now rolling out classes and workshops and a retreat off the back of that to yeah to share yes. the practices and women's circle discussions and things like that yes and yeah. it will be really interesting to see how that unfolds because I there's likely to be some people in there who've experienced the the menopause through their medical treatments and not only from a natural phase of life as well. Mm. So I so think a lot stronger. Yes, yes, mm. exactly. Um, so now, I mean, it's been a little while now since you've done the course. How is your... Um, so I know you've been sort of working quite closely one-to-one with some patients. Um, it, is it okay to share a story about maybe one of your students you've been working with? Obviously, without yeah, sure. saying who they are, we keep them, no, we keep them no. confidential. <laughs> no, I've, I've, there's um, one particular person that I've worked with over the last, um, over two years now. So. Um, when she came to me, she she had had um, a mastectomy and um, we worked to, she actually, it's funny because sometimes people put on their health form that they would like to do one thing, but actually when you start working with them, you can improve a lot of, lot of different things as well. So she came to me, I think, to increase fitness and reduce anxiety. Mm-hmm. Um, but it because it's such a holistic practice whatever whatever she came to came to the room with you know we we could we could do some practices that basically made her feel better yes um, and and it's been really lovely to have this whole journey from um cancer and beyond so so coming back to increase you know initially increasing mobility and building strength but but gradually and and then at a certain point um it came into kind of less therapeutic and onto just regular one to one yoga practice and you've built in such a a lovely relationship um and then every now and then something happens like um recently she had an extremely stiff neck and actually when you look into that with the um five element theory you see that that's very typical of holding emotions and fear Mm. so it it's not necessarily a linear journey you know things can be triggered or or um emotions can be on a wave they can be absolutely fine for a while and then something happens and then the body wants to make it you safe again so everything kind of becomes rigid so it it's interesting because quite often people think something's purely physical and then you you have conversations about emotions as well yeah and maybe some affirmations around safety and trust and yeah. you know you are well now you know it's it's yeah it comes so much more than just physical yoga And I think it's a really important point because initially, particularly students coming and if they're in treatment or just at the end of treatment and really feeling the physical effects of that, it's understandable that's their initial focus. But over time, like you say, the impact is very holistic and the emotional processing that needs to happen after going through such a traumatic experience of 
just even receiving a cancer diagnosis is pretty intense. And then the, the treatment itself. Um, and there's often not the space to do all that emotional work in the middle of treatment. It's just a bit of a roller coaster ride. And then this is the thing that a year or two after treatment, suddenly something comes up like that. And it's, you know, often it can be fear of recurrence or it might just be that point of recovery where the body's able to cope with going a little bit deeper in healing the emotional side of things. And it's so lovely that you have the five elements as well in understanding what some of those physical manifestations might be representing. It's like, yes, of course, it's a physical reality. And <laughs> there's other layers to it mm. as well to, to work yeah, with. Yeah, because even if, I mean, this this particular neck injury came from, it was triggered by a fall, but then the reaction was so much more from from the mind and the body because the body's been through so much in the last five years that to have a fall and to feel unsafe again can yeah. make the reaction disproportionate and it and i think what's really useful is to sh is the sharing of insights and explaining this is what's happened and and then very quickly you can get an emotional release and feel so much better even if you've been going to various um other people say an osteopath and a physio and and trying to fix it mm. physically that yeah. actually when you get those insights and understanding and then you start to emotionally relax is when the body can go okay you're okay now you're all right yes. and kind of yes. let go of all the stretch reflexes yes and is you know isn't that why we love yoga because it's not just a physical practice it's it's the breath work and the meditation and the philosophy and the relaxation and all of those things that just work on all those levels when we're looking at sort of recovery and healing. Mm. That is, it's not just on a physical level, although that's super important. There's yeah, it's all important, isn't it? it. Yeah. yeah. And I think just having, you know, the tools to manage, um, heightened emotions of the stress and um anxiety and maybe panic with especially um near at the time of treatment mm. and there's so much happening that you're you know you're in a state of overwhelm to just be introduced to a few tools that could be from breath work or, or whatever they are acupressure anything that just to have a toolkit so that when you go in for any appointment, you can go, right, I'm going to do this or I'm going to do that. And it's going to keep a lid on it. <laughs> yes. I can manage. And isn't that such a lovely thing to give our students, mm. you know, to um, that you're not just helping your students when you're with them in the class, that you will create, you know, helping them build a toolkit to manage whatever life throws at them in between classes. Mm. Um, and obviously, you know, if she's been with you for two years, then, you know, that speaks volumes for the benefits that she must be experiencing. Um, and to build that relationship of someone who gets it, I think that's um, something I've come across and certainly I've, sort of heard in feedback is how important it is when people have cancer that they the people that they work with get it mm. understand mm. what they're going through what their needs are what they're capable of and and all of those things and I think that's such a important part of that teaching relationship and that trust um that just to be able to go oh okay I can let this person look after me a bit because they get it. Yeah. And I think also, you know, if, if you have a very close um, circle of friends and family supporting you, they're obviously incredibly emotionally invested themselves. And it's nice to come to a safe space where you can go, this is how I'm feeling. And I can, I can actually tell you exactly how, you know, 
what's happening. I mean, and if if they kind of have that clarity as well, obviously, but you could, they can bring whatever they want into the room. Yeah. And there's not, you know, I don't have that um, that personal emotional reaction. You know, I can hold the space that they can bring whatever they whatever they need, whatever they want into the room. Yes, absolutely. Right. And I think that's part of the value that we offer as yoga teachers is to sort of have that kind of neutral but caring space where they don't feel guilty about offloading what they think and feel because it might feel you know they might not want to do that with their partner or their parents or their children or their best friend um because on some level they're still looking after them too mm. but yeah to sort of come to a space where it's like oh right I can be myself and this is how I really feel and the thoughts that have been coming into my mind and what can we do about that yeah absolutely absolutely and and supporting them with their you know when sometimes it's a time when when individuals kind of face their own mortality um and they haven't really given that any thought before and it can be a time if they want to talk about that then then that's fine too you know whatever they want to talk about is is absolutely fine and you know as yoga teachers we we respect um any belief what, whatever whatever beliefs people have you know and yes. support them through that as well which is which is really lovely to be able to do yeah oh that sounds wonderful it sounds like you're doing some really lovely work with people <laughs> and long may that continue um so as we start to wind up um I guess just checking in with where can people find you if they want to work with you like where in the world are you first of all <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm in Claygate in Surrey lovely um, and um yeah you can find me on social media um I'm Claygate Yoga Clinic so that could be on Facebook, Instagram, um, YouTube, LinkedIn. LinkedIn, I'd be Nikki Dye. Um, and yeah, so yeah, do get in touch. Um, love to have a chat and see. We could, you know, it's, I always start with a chat and then we can see how we can help each other. And Yeah, it's, it's always the best way, isn't it? <laughs> human connection a little bit fantastic um and you have some workshops as well as classes is that right yeah so I've got um monthly menopause yoga workshops which Lovely. consist of insights and women's circle to share experiences and then yoga and breath work and mindfulness meditation and some tools and um signposting to other things um, so they are in the middle of each month um, at um, Colette's Health and Fitness in Thames Ditton. Um, members and non-members are, are welcome. Oh, that sounds lovely. And then obviously people can come and find you one-to-one -one as well. So yes. there's yes. lots there. That's amazing. Um, well, it's been really lovely chatting with you and just hearing what you've been up to since you graduated from the and course. You. The course sounds wonderful. Um, and I think the really great thing is that that you do have a community where we can keep in contact. Mm -hmm. You know, if there's any question that I have, I can jump onto the Facebook group and ask or um, your recent like business talks on a Tuesday, you know, you kind of keep giving, which is which is really important, really great. So, yeah, oh, thank you. For that. Lovely. I'm glad you've been enjoying that. Um, so thank you so much for joining me today. It's been so lovely to speak to you. Um, and I'd love to hear more in the future about uh, how your work is progressing. Yeah, thanks very much, Jenny. Nice thanks, Nikki. Take care now. Bye. Bye. <laughs>